He doesn't worry about taking anything with him. Yeah, I'll see. Ah, uh, perhaps it's just as well. Anyway, the city won't get him down. Hello. Wait, I'll get some pie for you. Okay. Got your gear packed yet, Ricky? Yep. All I need till I get a job. Then I'll buy me some fresh clays. So nobody will know that I've come from the bush. <laughs> yeah, boy. Well, a bad rule fish now. I suppose you'd better get going, huh? Now here's some kind. And don't waste your money on rubbish. Hope you didn't stick any jug shark in, Mum. Or the driver will chuck us off the bus. Aren't we going to have any school today, Mr. Thompson? Oh, yes, as soon as we've said goodbye to Karma. Where's he going, Mr. Thompson? He's going to the city, to the Technical Institute, to learn how to become a motor mechanic. Will he come back? Oh, yes, in his holidays, I suppose. Yeah, he's going to fix the old bomb. We're looking to you, son. Yes, I know. Turn that way. Turn that way. Turn that way. You might find this useful, son. <laughs> thanks, Mr. Thompson. And thanks for all the help you've always given to me, too. I don't know what to say. That's all right. Just keep plugging along. You'll make the grade. Yeah. Come on, Tama. We better get going. Surely you're not going too, Ricky. Yeah, I'm going with Tama. But Ricky, just one more year at school would make a tremendous difference to you for the rest of your life. Oh, I've never done any good at school, Mr. Thompson. You know that. I'm tired of being a failure. I want to earn some money like Jimmy Rafferty. He's working in the freezing works. Doing all right too. But he was a lot older than you, Ricky. Another year at school. If you really tried, we might get you an apprenticeship at a good trade, like Tama. I'm not clever like Tama. Well, I don't believe that. I think you're just lazy. Uh, Mr. Thompson, Ricky never did get a good start in English. If you don't give the little ones attention, they'll never learn to talk properly and will never catch up. We can't afford to keep him at school. It would be better if he went to the city and try his luck there. Qualifications are needed in the city. I think it's too late for Ricky. He will just have to learn to use his hands like me. We're not all that unschooled, you know. You know those married butchers at the meatworks? Have you heard of those forestry blokes who drive those big machines? Hey, uh, you white collar fellows don't know half the stuff. Eh? Too many Maoris end up in unskilled jobs or seasonal work with no security. Qualifications are the thing these days. You know, that little bit of paper when you go for a job. Not forever say goodbye. Hold back tears you. Not cry 
just a smile for on my way Someday I'll come home to stay I'll always miss my We came on the bus. What are you doing up here? Well, I, I got a job at the Technical Institute. But, but Ricky's got no job. There's no work in the country. Or you'll have to come and stay with us. Oh, I'm all right. I, I got a uh, place at the Mary Boys Hostel. But they can't put Ricky up, you see. I wondered maybe if you could. Of course we'll look after him. Won't we, Mary? <laughs> There's so many people packed in this dump. One more won't matter. <laughs> We're going to get a state house. And then we'll have plenty of room. Been saying that for years. The government keeps putting the deposit up. <laughs> Gee, look at that pants. That's what they call them. Fancy pants. But nobody seems to know where he gets all his money from. Hi there, Mrs. Hemming. Oh, hello, Fancy. These are my nephews from the country. Tama. Hi. And Ricky, his brother. Ricky's going to stay with us. Oh, very good. <whistles> hey, are we going out, passion flower? Not with you, Cactus. Hey, do you play on that guitar, Ricky? <sighs> yes, a bit. I don't know what we were going to put Ricky, Mum. Hey, look, if you only want a bed, man, you've plenty of room in my flat. Oh, thank you, Fancy. We are rather crowded. Come on, we better go inside. Go in, you must be hungry. Good idea. Hagen, <laughs> see, I'm going to have to take you in hand, man. Stand up. Let's have a look at you. 
Yeah, we'll have to smarten you up a bit for city life. Here, like a drop of plum. Got a good drop here. Get it from a carrier who collects the empties for the vineyards. I gotta hide it from old Ma White, the landlady. Oops. Yeah, try a bit of that. Well, go on, drink it down. Well? Now, you're gonna need some new clothes. Mmm. Hey, I got this from a Chinese sailor. That ought to give you a lift. Try it on. She's thinking, me. Hey, my girl won't let me wear it. She thinks it's too Peking. Yeah, well, it'll do. Well, what sort of job are you after? Oh, in the freezing works. Why are you, Ma? He's always got to slave your guts up. Have you got any references from a headmaster or a clergyman or anything? No, nothing. All right, well, we'll fix that. Uh, Farmers Rural Cooperative Limited. Right. Equity Guarantee Corp. Amalgamated Concrete Limited. Yeah. Sounds solid enough, eh? Now look, you used to work for these people and were solid and reliable, OK? I'll write you some references that'll get you in anywhere. And you might be able to get me in. Hello. Excuse me. Tell me where the uh, Siemens Club is. Uh, I'm the first time here in New Zealand. Uh, do you know where it is? Uh, I'm a stranger here, too. Um... Do you mind for uh, some food, sir? Let's have a cup of coffee somewhere. You come along? Yes, thank you. Chaps, you've been selected for this course from the abilities that you've shown in your exams and your general work at school and your conduct. And the, there's any amount of room for you in the motor industry, and we have a list of employers who each year take a certain number of students. The skills you learn while you're here enable you to enter into other industries. We have people who've taken work an interest in aircraft, in aircraft servicing, and even to a stage of becoming a pilot. We have other students who have also achieved in other directions, such as becoming foremen or leading hands in garages around the country. This is most gratifying, and I hope that you people will also live up to this. I would like to see at some stage that someone enters the teaching profession and takes over from us. We'd like to see a Maori student being able to teach automotive engineering and diesel engineering to some of our students in the future. You've been dancing for a long time now, haven't you, Penny? Are you still interested? Yes, I've been I've been learning ballet for years. I was going to teach, but I got too interested in my artwork. Well, I've been asked to try and find a European girl for a part in the dance drama at our Maori club. Sounds interesting. But I know nothing about Maori culture. I was never taught anything at school. This is modern dancing with a race relations theme, and it's being produced by a young Maori choreographer, Matangi Kingi. He's breaking new ground. Sounds great. Well, come along if you think I'll be OK. OK, do.
Penny, Tama, this is Tamamuru. I would like you both to try the first movement of this dance. It's supposed to show that although Europeans don't want their children to marry Maoris, some young people are irresistibly attracted to each other. So Penny, will you try your first movement from here? My father runs a small farm. Doesn't pay much, though. His main interest is in carving. Mary carving. He does a bit to sell. It must have been a struggle to bring up such a large family. <laughs> well, it was. My parents could only afford to send me to school. My brothers have to go to work, I'm afraid. You were the bright one. No, uh, not really. I had a good teacher. He put me through. And what do you want to do now? <laughs> get through my apprenticeship and get my ticket. Hey, great. Then perhaps I'll go and do aircraft servicing. Gee, it's a, it's a real job, though. I guess I'm a little bit too ambitious. Oh, nonsense. You learn to service aircraft and you'll get a job anywhere in the world. They do, you know, these aircraft types. You haven't told me what you want to do yet. I just want, I just want to draw. Fascinated with lines and colours. I wish I knew more about Maori aircraft. It's part of our lives and we should be exploring it. My dad could help. I could tell you some of the things that he tells me. I'll try. goes to show Europeans aren't used to our uninhibited way of life yet. <laughs> you know, they built these places for storing food. But as well as that, the Maori chiefs used to keep their badges of rank in here. You know, all their treasures and everything. Come on, let's go. only three fingers. <laughs> There's a woman story that goes, one of our ancient ancestors, Muku Waiteke. He's from Hawaii. He's one of the first men to carve and decorate these places. He's supposed to have three fingers <laughs> on each hand. What about this one? <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. The finest piece of ancient carving in existence. It's done entirely by stone tools. Now, have you got it? What's the name of the ship? That's so easy. Right, Freiburg Wharf. You got the gangway and asked for? Yeah, in a lambry. Right, well, it's written on the front of the envelope there. Give him that and bring back the parcel he gives you. 
Stuff it down your shirt and come straight back here. And what do you say if somebody stops you? Yeah, that's right. Looking for my sister, Grace. Mum says she's got to come home. All right. Now, we'll give him that big smile of yours and you'll get by. Off you go. I've often heard that Marys have good rhythm for dance. And now I know. Sorry for butting in you on this pity. But have you got a brother by the name of Ricky? Yes, where is he? He's outside, scared to come in. He's asking for you. Well, well anything wrong? He looks as if he's been drinking. He's scared the priest might see him. He's only 17. Someone must have given it to him. I'm sorry about this, Penny, but I'll have to take him home somehow. These little brothers. Well, perhaps I can help. I've got Mum's car outside. No, I don't want to put you to any trouble. Well, don't worry. I'd like to meet your brother. I'm sure you don't mind? Of course not. Come on, we'll go and see him. Well, hold on. I haven't finished my tea yet. You can't finish your tea to it. Come on. OK, then. Thanks, Don. See you later. It's OK. Hey, 
Ricky, you been on the booze? No. Only had a couple of beers. I seen poor Tina. You know Tina? The one that came on the bus with us. Yes? Well, how about her? She was down the wharf. She was very sick. The police came and took her to the hospital on the ambulance. Why? Was she on the ship? You better go back to Angie's. Then she can phone Tina's parents from there. Oh, this is Penny Davis. She's offered to take you home in the car. What do you think's happened? I don't know. But Tina's one of our relatives. We better go and find out. Come on, let's go. No, don't go home. Fancy will be after me for his parcel. I didn't get it off the ship. Don't worry, I'll handle him. I've been hearing about him selling watches in the pubs. Come on, let's go. I've been talking to Tina's mother on the telephone, and she's coming through to the hospital tomorrow. Did they notify the police that she was missing? Yes, they're very worried. The police weren't able to trace her. That's the trouble when a lot of these young Maoris come to town. They've got nowhere to go, and someone always exploits them. Don't you get it? No. A fat lot of use you are. I told you that ship was sailing tonight. Well, Ricky had to help someone down on the wharf, a girl. Yeah, one of those Maori ship girls, I suppose. Nothing of the sort. We know this girl. She's never been away from home before. She's innocent. No, I don't believe that. I've seen the way they chase after the seamen. This is different. She was held a prisoner by the crew on the ship for four weeks, and they made use of her. It's terrible. Here's the money. I want to talk to you in my room. You'd better leave Ricky alone. Make sure you do your own dirty work in the future. Well, a lot of thanks you get for trying to help dumb Maoris. You'll be sorry for this. You better sleep on the couch in future, Ricky. Keep away from him. I'll see if I can get your work down at Lucas. I'm doing part of my training down there. I was thinking of joining the army. Keep me out of trouble. There are too many Maoris in the army. Oh, at least you can learn a trade. You don't even need a school certificate. It's a sad state of affairs when Maoris have to join the army to learn a trade. I'm sorry, Pen. It must have been a bit of a shock to you. It's a pity your first contact with Mary life should be so sordid. Oh, don't worry. It's an experience. Over in our suburb, we don't see many Maoris. Don't know how they live. Don't think anybody cares much, either. I'd like to show you how we live in the country. Everybody knows each other, and no one gets into trouble. It's a good life. Is the East Coast beautiful? I've never been down there. It's got everything. You'll have to take me there someday. News flash. The freighter Theresa was recalled to port this evening after a police launch intercepted her off Great Barrier Island. As a result of inquiries, six members of the crew were taken into custody. Today, the Prime Minister... The long arm of the law. Come on, I'll take you home to your hostel. Right. Father do. Oh, big business. Shipping agent. Um, marine insurance, you know. Oh, sounds too flash for me. 
No, he worked his way up from nothing. He was only a little, a little shipping clerk before he started. How will he take to my being a married? Oh, you don't want to worry about that. You, you should hear him whenever we have overseas visitors sounding off about New Zealand race relations. Best in the world, he says. Married the more advanced than most coloured races. Hmm. And they make good rugby players and soldiers, too. Sounds all right. How about your mother? She's sweet. You'll like her. What you might call a, a social success. I haven't told her much about us yet. Well, I thought it best if you wanted to meet her. Here, put this on. Oh, I didn't have to put this on, do I? Of course you do. I don't think I'd better come with you. Well, you're not going to let me down, Tama. Not now that I've brought you this far. I have a feeling you've been holding out on me. It's Penny now. She telephoned to say she's bringing a friend. I hope he's not one of those long-haired types from the art school. Bunch of creeps. Oh, no. He looks like a yachty this time. He's very suntanned. <laughs> well, that's a relief. Here, let me have a look. By God, he's a bloody Maori. Harry. Oh, no, surely. Why is she always trying to shock us? He's a Maori, all right. We'll soon settle this. It's those art students. She was all right when she was at boarding school. I told you she shouldn't go to art school. Why is she so thoughtless? The Donalds are coming this afternoon, and you know Edith. It'll be all over town. And he can't stay here the weekend, that's certain. I'm expecting Alwood Smith. He's the principal of... Concord. Arrives tomorrow from the States. Run down and try and get rid of him, will you? Well, I'll try, but you know Penny. If you have any trouble, I'll come down, but I just don't want to be upset when I'm expecting visitors. Tama Muru. How do you do? Where's Dad? I want him to meet Tama. Your father is expecting some important visitors. Penny, I'll go if it's not convenient. Oh, no, wait. I want you to meet my father. I'll go and fetch him. Dad, this, this is Tama. Young man, I don't want to take this personally, but you've come here at a rather awkward time. I'm expecting some American visitors I want Penny to meet. As you know, they don't hold the same liberal view on race relations that we do. It's about time we practiced what we preach. You mean, sir, you don't mind Maoris fighting for you in the army? You just don't want us in your home? These men are Texans. I don't want them to know that my daughter associates with Maoris. I'm not interested in your American friends, Mr. Davis. Only your daughter. Then you'd better go. No Maori is going to marry my daughter. We haven't even talked of marriage. I don't want to see her dragged down. Marry a Maori and you marry the whole tribe. Oh, nonsense, Dad. You're out of date. How can you know anything about Maoris? You never mix with them yourself, sir. Young people are thinking for themselves these days. Maoris and Europeans are marrying all over the country. Indeed. Not in my family. We've always been respected. We've never stinted Penny. We sent her to a good school. We have plans for her. You haven't objected to anyone I brought here before. Why object to Tama? I've been in the world a bit longer than you. I know what is best. And now, young man, you'd better go before I lose my temper. Your daughter invited me. If that's the way you feel, you ought to go and live in South Africa. You impudent pup! Get off my property immediately, or by God, I'll... I'll go. I shouldn't have come here in the first place. It's sheer prejudice. You don't even know, Tama. Tama, come back. He doesn't mean it. He's only bluffing. I'll show you whether I mean it or not. This thing has got to end. Oh, now. Crazy. Stop. Tama. 
I'm coming with you. It's no good. I've had enough. You didn't tell me the truth. I didn't know my father was going to turn on us like that. Truly, I didn't. Oh, listen to me, please. You'd better go back to your family. They've planned for you. I want to live my own life with no strings. I can't bear to go back to that. I can't help. I've got nothing till my training finishes. That doesn't matter. I can get a job. I can stay with my friend Deirdre in a flat. Do you realize what you're throwing away? Oh, yes, nothing that matters. Tom and I can't bear to see you hurt. Please don't send me away. Tom and I love you. She said if you were to come here to call her. Thanks, I will. Hello. Hi. This is Tama Muru. Hello, Tama. Hello. I've heard a lot about you. Come and... Oh, just a minute. You cost me for the mercury. <laughs> here, sit down. Tama. Cigarette? <sighs> well, what's up? I've run into a bit of difficulty at home. Deirdre, I was wondering if I could stay here with you for a while until I managed to sort things out. Well, yes, of course you can. Thanks. I think I can guess what happened. Yes. I took down the home and, and my dad blew his top. Well, what do you expect from the managing director of Concord Shipping? Young man, what are your assets? I'm 19. Mm -hmm. Of sound health. Yes. For absolutely no material possessions. What? No collateral? That's my trouble. No collateral, but too much colour. <laughs> and my boyfriend has the same problem. Oh, that sounds like him now. No, it isn't. It's Mum. Uh-oh. Have you got a back, back exit? Ah, uh, yes, this way. Good. Uh, oh, Tama, please stay here with me. No, I'd better go. I don't want to cause another scene. Well, when am I going to see you? I'll get Deirdre's phone number. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Call again soon. Come in. I was going to telephone you, Mum, just as soon as I knew if I could stay with Deirdre. Well, I'd better go and get ready for work. I thought you'd come here, Penny. I want you to come home. I don't think you realize what you're letting yourself in for. These Maori boys are completely unreliable. Always in trouble. You only have to read the papers. That's not fair, Mum. They're not all delinquents. Most of them come from poor homes and large families. Well, they shouldn't have so many children. After all, they're the best treat of native race in the world. They just take advantage of it. But Mum Tama is different. He's a worker. He's determined to, to learn a trade. Look, Mum, I just know that he's worthwhile. Well, well, you don't want to get involved. Now, your father is adamant. Either you stop seeing this Maori boy, or he'll cut off your allowance. Oh, well, let him. I can get a job. Now, Penny, do be sensible. You're ruining your chances of a good marriage. But who's talking about marriage? Look, Dad is always trying to organize things. Now, let's not be hasty, Penny. What about that trip to Europe we've always talked about, to further your art studies? You can't bribe me, Mother. I want to live my own life and be free to choose my own friends. Why choose Maoris? I just can't understand for the life of me what you see in these Maoris. You'd be surprised. Just what do you mean by that? I mean, for years, Europeans have been romanticizing South Sea Island women. Now it's our turn to discover the men. I can see you're not going to be any help. 
Well, after all, it is the approved policy of the government to encourage integration. I'll have to go now, Penny, if you insist on staying here. I'll bring over some of your clothes. Oh, I'm doing all right. Well, it looks like it. It's been good getting your letters. All the kids now want to become a mechanic. Oh, well, our tutor said there's always plenty of jobs for married mechanics when they qualify. All the big firms want them. Mm. And what about our Ricky? Oh, he tried a few jobs, but no luck, I'm afraid. He wants to join the army. He gave me a few papers for me to bring down for you to sign. Yes. Well, that will be all right, I think, for our Ricky. He works hard in a group. I don't know, I'll have to think about that one. I felt ashamed when my parents treated Tama when I took him home. And now you make me feel so welcome here. It's the different social classes that keep people apart. That's right. Most Maoris are given the labouring jobs. They're working class. A few get high education and are accepted by the middle class. You need more than education where I come from. Money, possessions, that's what they talk about. They treated Tama like a stray dog I'd bought in off the streets. Penny, you can forget about all that, especially here. I'm rich. I've got three horses, 
You can go riding, swimming, fishing, anything you like. This is the life. Cup pie. Penny here? Uh, no, Mrs. Davis, sir. Come in. Well, I came round to try and get her to come home for Easter. Uh, will she be back later? No, she's gone away. Gone away? Yes, she's gone to spend Easter with Tama at his village. Do you mean to say Penny's gone to stay at a Maori park? Uh, yes, they sometimes have a hui there at Easter. A hui? Oh, that's terrible. I'm told that at these Maori affairs they have no morals whatsoever. Where is the place? Somewhere on the east coast, I think. Well, what part of the east coast? Thomas said near Apotiki. Oh, that is irresponsible of you. You should never have let her go away without getting in touch with me. You know Penny's only just turned 18. Penny is perfectly capable of looking after herself. And anyway, you can't stop people when they're in love. You mean infatuation? Her father and I will have to find her before things go too far. We must start for the coast immediately. It may take us days to find her. Henry, have you got my bag in the car? Of course I have. Come on, let's get away. Kamakama. You know, you people call it marrow. <laughs> what else do you cook in a hangi? Tuna, you know, eels. <laughs> eels? <laughs> what else? Christmas pudding? <laughs> <laughs> New potatoes? Hmm. Oh. Well, those things too. <laughs>
what does it feel like to be a Maori? You know, Tama, I love every minute of being here with you and your family. It's the first time I've been able to feel absolutely free. Your people, they're so loving and, and so natural. Hmm. The novelty would soon wear off. You'd get tired of being poor all Nonsense. The time. I wouldn't care what happened, so long as I could be with you. Aren't you afraid of my people descending upon you at any time? If that's your custom, I'd be able to cope. Children, have you seen a young Maori man with a blonde girl? Are they here in the settlement? Were they hiking? Yes, probably. They went down to the coast. Well, if we can believe her, that's the first definite news we've had of her. They can't be far off. And thank heavens there's a pub at Tikaha. This place looks deserted too. Do you think Tama owns any of this land? Probably, along with the hundreds of other owners. The Maoris own 90% of the land around this coast. Why don't they do something about it? And the problem is to get the owners to agree. And besides, they haven't got the money nor the know-how. to send into the city. This is a teko teko. You know, that figure that goes on top of the gable of a meeting house? It's usually of some warrior. You know, I knew almost nothing about the Maoris till I met Tama. And even I had some of that color prejudice that most Europeans have. Don't worry. Some of our older people had prejudices, some very strong. They fear that by intermarriage, our people will be swallowed up, and our Māori tongue will be lost. Do you believe that? Yes, I'm afraid I do. You see, we feel like a small stream moving into a big river. You and my dad will make a good pair. With you, it's tradition. And with him, well, with him, it's his social status. But we'll win you around our generation. You'll see. Do you think you can learn to live with us? I'm going to try. Love all our children, respect our elders, and cry over our dead? I suppose I'll have to. You won't take our son away from us and turn him into a European, will you? No, I won't do that. I promise you. You know, it's a strange thing, your people and mine. We like to live close to our relations. But your people, I don't know, they want to get as far away from the relations as they can. <laughs> Excuse me, could you tell me please where I'll find Mr. and Mrs. Muru? Maru? Yes, that's me. Look, do you sit down? My name is Davis. I understand my daughter Penny is here. Oh, I'm sorry. She left on the bus for Auckland this morning. My son went with her. He must have passed them on the way. Good Lord. We made all those inquiries at every settlement along the coast. Oh, dear, dear. You must be, both of you must be very tired. Would you like a cup of tea? Thank you. 
We're very worried about Penny. Ever since she became mixed up with your son, she's quite unpredictable. Don't blame my son, Mrs. Davis. I think it's your daughter who is setting the pace. She knows what she wants, and she has plenty of drive, perhaps like her father. Well, what makes her do these things? She's had the most careful upbringing. We've chosen her friends. You can't tell how the mind works when people are in love. There's a Maori saying, he kokunga te ngāku, he kore kitea. You cannot see into the corners of the heart. I've heard all that before. The fact is, your son can't afford to keep Penny in the style that she's been used to. She must come home. I don't think she values your standards of living. She's taken to our simple way of life. Yesterday, she looked quite radiant. That won't last, and they can't live on you. Pay for. When my son finishes his course, he'll get good wages. And what happens when the rest of the family goes to live on them? There won't be much chance of that in the city. They'll be lucky if they get a couple of rooms. It's only here we can live a communal life like we used to. Well, it wouldn't suit me. It's too bloody primitive. Well, it has its points, particularly this type of community life. Here we look after our old people. We don't push them into an institution to die off. They help us look after our little ones. Mr. Davis, have you ever thought about growing old? There's nothing to be gained from staying here. Come on, Jane. What's the matter? Where are they going? Well, hi, hi, my whole lot of here, Well, there's no show of a birdie on this one. Look, Henry, there's not a great deal you can do if Penny's 18. In law, she's free to leave home as she wants to. Oh, I suppose I shouldn't have opposed Penny. I should have kept my head, but somehow I just can't stomach the idea of a Maori son-in-law. Do you know anything about this young man? No, but so many Maoris have got criminal records. You ought to know that. Yes, I'm dealing with them all the time, in court. Very few middle-aged Maoris go to prison. Mostly they're young and on minor charges. Sometimes you feel sorry for them. They don't understand court procedures. Oh, is that so? Can't these Maoris get a lawyer if they want to? Yes, if they can find any ready cash. But most of them just stand in the dock and hang their heads. They're inarticulate, can't defend themselves. <laughs> Not this young fellow of Penny's. He's got plenty of cheek. He actually stood up to me. <laughs> Did he? That's refreshing. He must have been better educated. You know, that's what we have to do with our young Maoris. Educate them thoroughly. It's far cheaper than keeping them in prison. Look, I suggest you get to know this young man better. Give him a chance. After all, Penny's no fool. She could have picked a good one. Tom, why should we upset our lives? Let's face it, Maoris are just not accepted in our circles. That'll change. We live in a city with the largest Polynesian population in the world. If we don't meet the needs of these people, we'll end up paying anyway. You sound just like my Rotary Club. They rang me up yesterday and asked me if I'd agree to have two Māori boys for dinner. That's a step in the right direction. What did you tell them? Not bloody Māori. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out on strike again, 
It's just my luck again. Strike bugs me everywhere. I've had more than my share. They struck for dirt money and let me down a hole. They struck for height money and let me up a pole. The brewery striker here will beat me for my beer. What can a joker do when life is all puckaroo? job. Do you know that chap Lucas has me doing jobs I'm not supposed to do without a ticket? Sounded very serious over the phone today. I am serious. What's up, Bright Eyes? Summer, I am going to have a baby. Truly? I saw the doctor this morning. We'll get married. I'll get a full-time job. And give up your apprenticeship. No, you won't. You're going to get your ticket. I can stay in my job as long as I possibly can. We'll manage somehow. You know what? I want to kiss you. Not here. Come on, let's get out, quick. I was afraid this was going to happen. You're much too young to get married. We love each other, that's all that counts. But this Maori use has nothing. He's taken advantage of you. You'd much better forget the whole thing. And I'll arrange an abortion for you, Penny. Well, these things are very simply arranged these days. You will not. I want my baby. I know Tamar and I should have waited till we were older to get married. Well, what are you going to do? You're underage, and your father certainly won't give his permission. Deirdre says that we can get a court order to get married. Oh, it's terrible when you really need your parents, and, and they fail you. Dad only thinks about money, and, and you only think about your social position. Oh, that's not so. Your father and I know how hard it is for the children of a mixed marriage. Well, they look down on. And whose fault is that? Certainly not the Maoris. Yes. Here it is, number 17. You go and ask this time. On your own. Maybe we'll have better luck. Excuse me. I rang you yesterday about your vacant flat. Can we see it, please? Oh. I'm sorry. It's been taken. Well, what about the sign in the window? Oh, that. I must have forgotten to take it out. Thank you. It's not much good my keeping away if they're going to refuse marriage. They'll soon find some excuse to, to throw us out. We'll try this one together. Hello. We've come about the flat. Could we see it? Oh, the flat. Oh, look, look, I'm sorry about this. There's been a bit of a mix-up. But the, I, I'm only the agent, and he will not have islanders or Maoris. Now, I'm sorry, dearie, but that's just how it is. Thank you. Hello, Penny. Hello, Tama. Hello. Why are you two looking 
seem so worried. Oh, we've been looking for a flat. We haven't had much luck, I'm afraid. Well, it's becoming a ghetto around here. There are landlords pushing out old age pensioners to make room for Maoris and Islanders. They can squeeze more money out of them. But we've got to find a place. You want to get married. But can you afford to get married? A flat costs at least $18 a week. Wouldn't it be better to wait for Tunner to finish his apprenticeship? Then you'd have more money. It would. But I'm pregnant. Oh, yes, I know we should have waited. Well, my parents are just so against Tamar. It made me more determined not to be separated from him. Well, for a girl like you, with your background, to love a Maori takes a lot of courage. But how on earth are you going to manage on an apprentice's allowance? I'm going to get some night work on the tow trucks at Lucas. Oh, well, it'll be different. Our old Maoris used to say, a small dark cloud can hide a multitude of stars. That nephew of yours, Tama, and the girl Penny. Haven't seen them at the club lately. You and your race relations dance, your dance drama. You started all this. Now they want to get married and can't find a flat. They're both working, so I'm looking for them. What, with so many people coming from the country and the islands? The landlords are doubling the rents. Yes, I know. I just looked at a house in Deadwood Street. The landlord wanted $30 a week for it. There was no hot water. The roof leaked. There were holes in the floor. And it was filthy dirty. You wouldn't let your dog live in it. You should see some of the houses with the island families packed in like sardines. Oh, eh. The mahi o the pakeha. I'm lucky. I've got a good landlord. Come to think of it, there's an empty room at the top floor. It's a big room. Not much furniture. No carpets. Oh, no water. Is it reasonable? Is it clean? Yes, it is. I used it once for a dance studio. Let's go and have a look at it. Penny and Tummer will be glad of somewhere to live. They've been knocked back so many times. There should be a law against racial discrimination, like they have in Britain. coming in for this tomorrow time. Is it ready? Well, I think the brakes are OK, but um, I think the clutch is just a little bit too shot. Mm, you better tell him about it. We yeah. haven't got a chance to do it. We're flat out, you know. Um, I'd like to earn some overtime, Mr Lucas. I'd like to do some night work. Mm. You haven't got a ticket, have you? We can't do anything, you know. You're an apprentice. But look, plenty of jakers do at night, Mr Lucas. And I need to earn some more money. Yeah, <laughs> I'm getting married. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is this this beautiful blonde we've been hearing about? <laughs> yes. What are your marriage jackets got that we haven't? <laughs> well, we're not in the rat race for a start. Mm. Well, look, it'd have to be under the lap. Uh, what about the tow truck? Night shift. Oh, which one? The 12 to 8. I can do that in the weekends quite easily. Mm. All right, then. Well, we'll give it a trial on that time, um, and we'll pay as if you had a ticket house then, all right? <laughs> Gee, Mr. Lucas, thanks.
How about doing the plugs on that box? Oh, I haven't got time today. I want to get away early. I'm going to get a special license. A license? You've got a license? <laughs> Not a marriage license. What? You and Penny, I suppose. This is very sudden. <laughs> We're having a quiet affair tomorrow. How about being a witness? You mean, how about being your best man? You need two witnesses, you mug. I'll bring the girlfriend. What's the jam? Church up the road, 10 o'clock tomorrow. Won't be having a reception, though. I can't really afford one. Oh, we'll have to do something about that. What about my old bomb? <laughs> you mean that vintage classic? Yes, it's ready for the road, and I know a good country pub where we can celebrate. How's that sound? God, boy. Thank bride. you. <laughs> this is the best way to have a wedding. No fuss, no speeches. Let's drink to us. Yeah, to us. us. <laughs> Where are the telegrams, best man? We didn't tell anybody. I did send one to my mother, but didn't get any reply. I've got one. It's from the Governor General. It says. Congratulations on achieving integration. <laughs> I'll drink to that. What's this? It's from Mum. Dear Penny, sorry I could not be at your wedding. I was too upset. I always expected you would have a white wedding in the cathedral and a nice home to live in, not a place like this. But still, here is my present. It's Irish linen, monogrammed. Love, Mum. Never mind. At least we'll have a cloth on the table, even if we've got nothing to eat. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Can we come in? What's it's a surprise party. Surprise! Oh, you want a party?
here's the layout. Get this. We get over the back fence here, into delivery. Through here, up the alleyway, into the mall. Then there's two glass doors. Your department, no trouble to a man of your calibre. Through the shop, plenty of cover. Two more glass doors, see? Your department again. Then there's the safe, waiting and fat. I think it's a phoenix. I didn't get a decent look at it, but never mind. Hey. What do you reckon about this bloke coming along here? Could be a kid from the country, just nosing around. You could soon find out. Reckon you could con him into being a lookout? A cockatoo? Go on, have a go. Hey, man. You know the Turunga family living around here? No, I don't know them. Where you from? East Coast. Well, what do you know? I'm from there myself. Fakatane, Purigi, Tekaha. About four miles south of Tekaha. Tekaha? Man, I must be related to you. You know Hiramaya Tutari? No, my father's Honemuru. You know him? Yeah, I know him. What are you doing around here? Do you work in this place? I've joined the army. Be one of those SAS tough guys, eh? You know? I'm going to be a driver. Tom, what do you know? An army man. Reckon we ought to knock the top off a bottle. Here, man, get in. Yeah, okay then. Here you go, man. Big drink for a big fella. Go on, get into it. Army man, eh? Hey, you probably go down pretty big at this party we're going to tonight. How'd you like to go to a party, eh? Plenty of birds. I can give you an intro. You can take your pick. Fabulous. What do you say? Entry. We're just going to the music shop to get some records. Sheila's, the Grog and the records. You're on a good thing, man. Now, if you see uh, the night watchman or any cops, give us a whistle. Then start walking towards the car. Walking here, don't run. Can you pick me up? Yeah, then straight to the party. Make your way to Lynn Mall. Steady now. Steady. What's that? No, we haven't. Yes! No! The cop car's five minutes away. Let's go! Come on! Let's get out of here! seen him before. They reckon they were going to get some records for the party. When the alarm went, they jumped in the car. Well, I'm not going to arrest you now, but I want you to come along with us while we get this sorted out. Get in the car. We just want to have a talk to you. about you and those two characters that picked you up. One of our patrol cars caught up with them 
Did you know that these men were criminals? No, I've never seen them before. Not even the Maori chap? No. He said he comes from the same place where I come from. Down the east coast. But I never see him down there. Ricky, you could have been in court this morning on very serious charges. Break and entering. There's only two things that saved you. Your age. I checked with the army and they told me you won't be 17 until next week. And that Maori chap spoke up and stated you're only a country mug and they used you as a lookout. You reckon he knew my father? You're in the country, you're like one happy family, you know each other, but in the city you meet dangerous and cunning criminals who can trick you. And boy, you can be in real trouble. Maoris do very well in the army and it's a worthwhile career. Don't let anything spoil your career. Well, goodbye, Ricky. Goodbye, Sergeant, and thanks for letting me off. Right, next, please. Figaro, 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 Figaro. Just a trim? No, it's all going to come off. What, all of it? Yes, I'm in the army now. You're in the army now? <laughs> Well, I suppose um, you've been to a barber's before? Haven't been to a barber yet. What, never? Well, you've made the right decision. You have, because um, I see in the paper the other day where a um, parson married a couple of these, pardon the expression, these long hair types, <laughs> and um, he uh, had difficulty in telling which was the bride. So you joined the army. You Maoris must just about run the Bloomin' Army. Yes, a lot of my cobbers are in there. I is that why you joined? I reckon it's the best job for me. I've looked at them all. You know, I reckon I should have gone in for sheep shearing. That looks pretty good to me. You know, by the time they get a uniform onto you, you're going to look like a, a field marshal. Ah, yes. on collision at Henley Road intersection at uh, the new factory estate. Here, 90, on the corner of Henwood and Ellis streets. Um, yeah, Ellis is a new street. Hasn't been listed in the road map yet. Yeah, get off your mark, mate, and I'll uh, work out a shortcut from the motorway. ASA guaranteed to be on this one. Pendleton turn off, let him get ahead of you. Yeah, just do something, just let him get ahead of you. Yeah, don't follow him through the town, just look for the big uh, Ford service station on the corner. Of the road. His ace coming over the bridge now, he's right behind us. He's following up close behind. Foster Street, duck down behind it, down the side street. You'll save yourself about half a mile to a mile.
they've done to you. It's nothing serious. It's only a shallow cut. I had to leave her door open to get this guy out of a crash. Head on collision. Four people in hospital. I don't want to talk about it. How come you're still in bed? Shouldn't you be getting ready for work? Yesterday, after you'd gone, I got very sick. Auntie called for the doctor. I have to get more rest. No more of the strap hanging in crowded buses. Tama, I've got to give up my job. It's about the same with my overtime job, too. There'd be a police inquiry after today. I'll probably be calling as a witness. Things have just caught up on us. They sure have. We, we couldn't even live on your apprentice wages. We'd have to give up this flat. And then what are we going to do? I'll let go of my apprenticeship. Find a job, any job, that would give me a decent wage. We've had this out before. Do you want to be a slave? Now look, it's my job to provide for you, isn't it? All right, Mr. Muscleman. You can dig the ditches. You can cart the garbage. You can do all the drongo jobs they give the Maoris. But you're going to miss your big chance. You'll be worn out before you're 40. Penny, don't get upset. I can't help it. We've got somebody else to think of now. I wish we were home down the coast. Mum would know how to look after you. <laughs> she was a theatre sister at National Women's Hospital. She stuck to her training, not like you. How would you like to go down? I don't like to impose. No, it's nothing. You've forgotten. You're one of the family now. <laughs> and we all help each other. I could phone her. I'll go. If you'll stick to your apprenticeship. But I don't want to be parted from you. Oh, I know, silly. We've got to think of something, or we're going to go broke. Perhaps you could hitchhike down and see me in the weekends. Nothing would stop me. OK, boys, that's the main details. I'll give a run through again, and then we'll mount up. Remember, we're going from here to Taupo, using the main road route south, and your position's in the convoy as the trucks are spaced out now. Round front, and Briggs, your last. Any questions from anybody? No? OK, ready, wait for it. Take back!
I don't seem to be making much progress. You're doing all right, Penny. When weaving a mat, one uses their foot as the third hand. Very useful. Don't pull so hard. You might start something. It's not easy for me. You people have been weaving for generations. I've been looking at your first basket. It's very good. The first basket you make is always hard. No matter how crooked it is, you have to finish it. That's the only way to learn. What you start, you must finish. Then give it away to someone. That's the Maori way. How long have your people known all these skills? Ah, ngā mahi o mua. It goes a long way back. Baskets have a special meaning to us. The Maoris had many gods. There was a supreme god whose name was too sacred to mention. He handed down the three baskets of knowledge. The first basket, Ururu Matua, contained peace, goodness and love. The second, Ururu Rangi, prayers and incantations. And what about the third basket? Ruatau Tafito contained knowledge of arts and skills to promote the welfare of man and also the warning of evil and all things harmful to man. And people called you savages. And now you're beginning to learn something about Tewi Māori. Tama, can you get another turn on that? You can't leave it like that. You've got to get the pen in. This is it, Tama. Uh, I'll call. Right. <laughs> This is it, eh? <laughs> yes? Mum? Anything happen? Is she all right? I was going to come down. Hey, that's all right. That's even better. Sure, I'll come down. Yes, straight away. Give her my love. Yes, I'll phone Penny's mum and dad. Don't worry. I'll, I'll make sure that they know. Sure. OK, see you soon. Hey, thanks. Good on you, Tama. You've cracked it. Congratulations. It, it's, it's a boy. It's a boy, Will. It's when a boy. It? it came before its time. Congratulations. You'll be going down for the weekend. Is there a bus? Well, I might try to ride tonight. Well, I wish I could fly down. Well, I'll take you down. Oh, Courtney, I couldn't ask you to do that. Why not? I'm going down the East Coast. Do a bit of pig hunting anyway. When do we leave? Mr. Lucas, could you stretch a point? Look, I'll, I'll make up the time. Your jokers will send a man stone motherless broke. Go on, take off. Fly, fly. You take off the line. <laughs> I'm ready. Look, if you're not going to take me, I'll hire a taxi there and back and charge it. Yeah, but that's ridiculous. Why can't you wait for the service bus? Well, I can't wait. Penny needs me. Heaven knows what they're doing to her in that dreadful place. Do you realize this means I'm going to have to cancel a director's meeting? Oh, cancel it. We'd never forgive ourselves if anything happened to Penny. Oh, all right. But remember, I am not going to stay in that dump. <sighs> Cottage Maternity Hospital, they call it. There, you see, you had nothing to worry about. It's the only decent building in the district. Well, they're noted for looking after the babies. Couldn't we drive in? Oh, all right. Harry, 
Won't you come in and see her? Now, let's not go through all that again. I give you a quarter hour. I want to get back to Pembroke and have a decent meal. Hey, mister, why don't you go inside? There's a waiting room for fathers. No, thanks. I've been so worried about you, Penny. You're staying at the par. Thomas' mother has been wonderful to me. I couldn't have been in better hands. Mum is a trained nurse. Well, I could have helped. Your father hasn't quite accepted the situation yet. Well, when are we going to see the baby? They should be bringing him in at any time now. You have my sympathy, mate. I can remember my first. It can be very upsetting. This is not my first, and I'm not interested. I thought you looked a bit long in the tooth for your first. I've got seven myself. Still, with these fertility drugs these days, you wouldn't know the score. Are you all right, Penny? Yes, I'm all right now. I... I want to see my grandson. Here he is now. Oh, isn't he sweet? Look, he's got the Davis nose. Meet Tama Tekapua, Henry Muru. Devastating Marilyn. 